everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, another edition of Overrated. I'm Michael J. O'Connor. James Flutie. And uh, this week we're, we're continuing on with our, our theme of movies you, you may have missed. I think that this one would definitely uh, fall under that, ca- that category because uh, apparently it didn't do very well. Uh, there, there have, uh, from what I've heard, there haven't been my, many DVD sales, but this is like, this is a total like lost classic to me. This movie's hilarious. Uh, the wrong guy with Dave Foley. The wrong guy, the 1997 comedy. Yep. It's written by Dave Foley, who also stars as the hapless lead. Uh, David Anthony Higgins, who plays the detective. Hilarious. Uh, hunting the real killer also co-wrote it along with Joy Kogan. And it was directed by David Steinberg. Uh, it's about Nelson Hibbert, a man who wrongly assumes he's being hunted for a crime he did not commit. In fact, no one is after him. Uh, while the real killer, played by Colm Fior, wrongly assumes Hibbert is a secret agent foiling his elaborate scheme. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, the reason... Did I show this to you originally? I showed this to a good amount of people. I can't remember. It, it may have been. I, I, may, yeah. I, yeah, it may have been. I discovered it because I'm a huge, huge Kids in the Hall fan. Yeah. yeah. And so just anything that they were involved in, I would go watch. Mm -hmm. And this is Dave Foley, uh, who is, for my money, one of the best comedians. I absolutely love Dave Foley. I do, too. He does does everything right. He does. (laughs) He he is a fantastic straight man. Yeah. He's often the straight man in a Kids in the Hall sketch. Uh, and he does uh, physical and and goofy comedy as well. I mean, he's just, he's he uh, plays the straight character who's also funny in like news radio. Yep. Uh, he plays the over the top crazy character in uh, the wrong guy. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. His stand up I enjoy as well. I do too. Yeah, I do too. Um, yeah, he's he's fantastic. I love Dave Foley. He he is in, and this is a this is a tall order, but he is. He, uh, does a the monologue of my favorite kids in the hall sketch of all time is it the bad doctor the bad doctor <laughs> that's my favorite kids in the hall sketch <laughs> but just just when he comes out covered in blood drinks the water you want to know something i'm a bad doctor i mean it, it's fa- he that's my favorite kids see in the hall this sketch. it's urine yeah. i ask it they give it to <laughs> another me another man's <laughs> urine <laughs> i don't know what to do with it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I love Kids in the Hall. I've seen them live a few times. Um, they're uh, they're phenomenal. Yeah. I've, I've I've come across some weird, neat movies because I would specifically seek them out if they did a role in in one. And the wrong guy is one of them. Absolutely love the wrong guy. Wrong guy also has uh, Kevin McDonald in it from Kids in the Hall. Yeah, in a short scene with yeah. Kevin McDonald, and they actually are doing a joke from Kids in the Hall in that scene. Are they? The, they're they're rehashing a joke from one of their sketches. Oh, that's funny. It's the only moment I've seen them do that in the movie. So it's not like they they, they were constantly. Right. But uh, it's that where he's the name, and he obviously writes a fake name, and then he has to read it himself because he forgot what he wrote, <laughs> and they're both trying to figure out how to pronounce it. That was from uh, a kid in the hall sketch. Oh, I don't remember the, that sketch. Oh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it has uh, this movie has one of my. I could just quote this fucking movie all day, but it's one of my favorite moments where he's trying to think of a fake name and he's in the hospital. And he's oh like, yes, yeah. My name's Jones, Enema Bag Jones. <laughs> yes. The the doctor's response makes that scene too. Uh-huh. Like the, the, she's very dry, very no that that uh, that's my name. At one point, he gives her name as his name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm Smith. Dr. Vivian Smith. No, that's my no, name. No, that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Dave, I don't know what about this didn't make it. I yeah. mean, there's so much that's great. Jennifer Tilly is mm-hmm. hilarious it's in great. this. Um, the, the jokes, like the fact that it's a rich farmer trying to buy out the banker <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> is, is fantastic. I mean... Uh, there, there's just so I've never shown this movie to someone and not had them like it. Right. So it's just it just shows that there's a, a, so much of the su- success of a film is uh, luck. Yeah. If it just happens to connect with people, if it comes out at the right time, there are these movies that are considered classics now 
And they're just like, oh, yeah, it was great, but it came out alongside Star Wars, so no one gave, yeah. gives a crap. Yeah. Like, you know? Uh, you, and it might be one of those scenarios. UHF, one of my favorite <laughs> favorite movies of all time. I think it, it opened up uh, against Batman. And I think of like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders Dark, of the Lost Ark, yeah. 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 Just like the worst possible scenario right. you could have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, my, my love of Weird Al uh, knows no end, so yes. I, I also love UHF. Same here. Um, it's one of those like kind of like uh, Dirty Work. Which is a hilarious Norm Macdonald's movie. That's that's a hilarious movie, but it, yeah, it didn't do nothing. You know, it, you know. Every now and again, though, I will think that about a film, and then I'll revisit, and I'll think, oh no, no, this wasn't that. Is that, that one? Is that one? I haven't seen that in a while. Uh, Dirty Work, I don't remember as okay. being as such, but I did. I remember thinking Basketball mm. was unfairly uh, dismissed, yeah. and I saw it again and went like, no, actually, I don't really like. Yeah, this. I watched this that. This is not my thing. Watched that pretty recently. I felt the same way. Yeah, I was like, why didn't they? Oh, that's okay. Yeah, it's not really my <laughs> cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, wrong guy, though, I've watched dozens of times probably at this Same point, here. and it's funny to me every time. It is. I love this movie. Um, now, there is a point where he uh, is trying to hide from a cop, so he jumps into a dumpster. And then the cop doesn't leave. <laughs> yeah. And then he sets uh, a fire and is hanging out in the alley, so he still can't leave. Uh-huh. And then other cops show up, and then they start playing dice, and then then they start singing, and they're singing a doo wop song yeah. called "Gangster Girl." That is Bare Naked Ladies, by the way. The that is, is really? the band Bare Naked Ladies singing "Gangster Girl." They wrote it for the movie, and they sing it in the in the film. That's the most Canadian thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is the the like. I think uh, when all of that happened, a portal opened up yeah. to a uh, just a breakfast full of ham. A Tim Hortons. Is what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast is, of ham. And, and, and Michael J. Fox was sitting there. He was. And <laughs> Gretzky was, was yeah. serving up flapjacks. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> um. Uh, Kids in the Hall Canadian started on a BBC in Canada mm-hmm. uh, this film was filmed in Canada although I think it's actually supposed to take place in the United States I think so yeah um, yeah but it's uh, 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 super Canadian in a way and it's like the humor is sort of like you can get that Canadian humor from it Canadians have from what I can tell being that Canada is the uh, um, the the combination of the U.S. and England in this weird way, yeah. that's their humor in a weird way. It's yeah. the, it has some of the bizarreness and the pun structure and the zaniness of English humor right. with the sort of cold, dark strangeness of American humor. Right. So uh, that's that's how the wrong guy comes across, at least. That's so true. Uh, yeah, because there there is there's something about. Uh, Canadian humor that uh, is so Monty Python. Yeah, you know you mm-hmm. could even you could even point to Tom Green, whether you're a mm-hmm. fan of his or not. Uh, that is, that mm-hmm. is so Monty Python and so uh, ab- that absurdity, and and but then also the childish yeah. dark humor that comes from the United States, seemingly totally. like the Lenny Bruce yeah. influence. Yeah, uh, you see that. Yeah, you definitely see that with Kids in the Hall. That's yeah. Like a, a sketch that comes to mind is the the gorilla sketch. I don't know if you remember that one. Remember. It's this gorilla. It's this very zany, and it's it's overly zany. It's like Abbott and Costello. Gorilla comes up behind him. They're like, hey, it's a gorilla. <laughs> but then they stop the sketch, and he takes off the gorilla mask, and he goes like, you know, what we really want to do was talk about the <laughs> the uh, importance of uh, conservation in in five minutes. Uh, six gorillas will die <laughs> in, in the world. And then he starts going like, you know, this sketch probably wouldn't last five minutes, but you know, maybe maybe we'd work on the writing a bit. And we, we go, you know what? I think we can make this an eight or nine gorilla sketch. <laughs> and like, and it's such a dark thing because they're talking about killing, right. but it's also, it, it, yeah, it's this weird amalgamation of both. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting. Huh. Now, Dave Foley was originally going to direct this. Oh, really? Um, but he was busy because he was also on news radio at the time, very, which was very successful. Very funny show, too. I love that show. News radio, to me, uh, I, I really enjoy news radio, but I feel like it was what happens when you make a standard sitcom 
with some of the greatest comedic actors of all time. Yeah. Because, like, the show itself, is it's fine. It's a good sitcom. I would put it on par with, like, Friends or something like that. Sure. Like, oh, good. Yeah, you did a good job. You did yeah. what a sitcom should be. Yeah. But they had Dave Foley, mm-hmm. Phil Hartman, and Stephen Root, yeah. who are all phenomenal. Yeah. And they make that show. And, uh, well, I'm a, I'm a huge Andy Dick fan. I think Andy Dick is hilarious. And, you know, he's got his issues, all that aside, and he's he's known, unfortunately, more for uh, being insane rather than he is being funny. <laughs> but he's very funny. I used to love I, his, uh, his show. I, on I think, I, think uh, I have a chip on my shoulder with some of the early stuff I've seen Andy Dick do. Oh, yeah. So, like, <laughs> Andy Dick do. Um, <laughs> what does your but, Andy Dick do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that reminded me of a, uh, a joke by uh, the, uh, David Sedaris. He talks about his brother Dick who's Duke. from North Carolina. Dick Duke. And he says he has Dick Do syndrome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my stomach sticks out farther than my dick do. <laughs> um, so I apologize. No, no. Apologies no, no. You're fine. all around. <laughs> but uh yeah, I've seen Andy Dick do these really sort of uh they weren't particularly funny to me and they were of the variety that I would see not to say they weren't funny. They weren't funny to me. Mm-hmm. And largely it's because it takes this kind of brash, uh, unapologetic uh, narcissism. Mm-hmm. And I have a thing against that. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing really wrong with that. You can get a lot of good comedy from that. Yeah. But it's my own personal issues where it's just like if I see someone like sh- shouting something in the middle of class, it doesn't matter if it's funny to me. I'm like, shit. Shut up. Right. Sit down. This right. isn't the time for that. Yeah. I, and so when I see yeah. people do that, I just, I get an uneasy. So like I've, even though he's been involved with things that I like, like love, he's great in love. Yeah. Uh, the, the show on Netflix right now, but I just, uh, there's something that bugs me about him. So I can't appreciate it. I get that. It. I get that. I think that if he had uh, played his cards, right, he could have been the new, um, uh, Don Knotts. <laughs> you know, he's, very, he's like, I, unabashedly and and i say this there is absolutely no uh, irony in my love for don knots yeah, i here. absolutely love don knots when don knots uh, died mm-hmm. i i was very vocal about how sad that made me because of a fan and everyone thought i was trying to be an ironic hipster no every single person was like, oh yeah. Yeah, don knots fan no he is amazing hilarious <laughs> the ghost of mr chicken Ghost of Mr. Chicken. Yeah. Uh, I, I still love him most for his work on the Andy Griffith show. Same here. Uh, the the startled man is where oh. he first got known on the uh, the Tonight Show. So funny. Um, he's amazing. He is such a good physical comedian. Yeah, he had one of my uh, favorite jokes on the Andy Griffith shows. He, hey, well, and I got one bullet in my pocket. I'm a real good shot. You know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> my favorite funny moment when I do is, it. Uh, <laughs> my favorite moments with uh, with him was uh, Don Knotts was uh, there's an episode where they're trying to catch a shoplifter, mm-hmm. and so he pretends to be a mannequin, <laughs> and so he'll move when this woman's not looking, and then freeze again, and just he just <laughs> nails it. I mean, it's just perfect. His I, his physical comedy was great. I haven't seen another it, one is I that he it. wants to sing in the choir, and he's a terrible singer. Mm-hmm. So at one point they tell him we have a really sensitive mic, so you're going to have to lower your voice to the point where he's whispering. <laughs> and they go, perfect. And then they play another singer, but he's convinced it's his own voice. So it's all his facial expressions. Oh, that's that's cool. the joke. And he's ama- He's so good at that. That's stuff. so funny. Yeah. that's uh... Com- The wrong guy, back to you know, <laughs> news radio, comedic actors, when they really pull stuff off, I am completely for it. And Dave yeah. Foley has done it so many times. Yeah. That where I just go, he nailed that. He absolutely nailed that. Yeah. Uh, he, as far as physical comedy goes, I think that the, the wrong guy is, is a, a great forum for him doing physical comedy. Cause mm-hmm. he, mm-hmm. he is so startled and it's so frantic and you know, he's, he's constantly jumping out of windows or pulling himself. I saw this guy pull himself up into an airplane. <laughs> That's one of the best running gags throughout the entire thing. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. so impressed that he it's pulled great. himself up into an air vent. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the moment I really love that I thought showcased his physical comedy really well is when he tries to drink out of the water dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the, the water just gushes onto his face and you see his limbs flailing <laughs> everywhere and then he just kind of walks away like that was his intended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you may have shown me this. I, I, I feel like I saw it like right before I graduated high school, and I was, I was just obsessed, man. It was so funny. Oh God, and and yeah, I, I wonder, like you were saying, if if it's just timing, if it's if it just was too uh, Canadian, <laughs> too good, <laughs> too good, too good. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, I feel like this is as every bit as good as uh, Super Troopers. Yeah, right. Uh, in different ways. And Super Troopers became like a phenomenon. Yeah. So maybe it just didn't have enough of a uh, who are these guys factor, mm-hmm. you know? Like Super Troopers has suddenly there's these five actors no one's heard of. Right. And they have this very successful and very funny film. Um, maybe because Super Troopers is grounded. The yeah. characters are... are touching realistic people they feel real yeah yeah whereas like every other movie the broken lizards ended up making didn't have that really, so yeah. they didn't have the same connection right. i think that's a bit of it is there's no realness to the wrong guy it's it's just zany it's mm-hmm. just comedy um so maybe that that a lot of people don't connect to those type type of films would you consider it uh, a gag movie like airplane or um I don't no not like airplane mm-hmm. airplane um they they consistently have things that are completely outside of the realm of reality mm-hmm. like the the co-pilot being a balloon yeah <laughs> you know there's nothing like that in wrong yeah that's guy. true that's true um but there also is nothing grounded or real about the wrong guy either, either. yeah I love uh, um, I love the running gag of Jennifer Tilly being a uh, narcoleptic, <laughs> constantly crashing the car. <laughs> and it were, or the first time when she passes out, and Dave Foley just kind of looks over and is just like, "Uh oh." Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, now, now news radio again. Like we're mm-hmm. we're mentioning some of the great actors for that. Phil Hartman, yes, uh, was just one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, phenomenal, mm-hmm. phenomenal. Um, there are so many moments in Saturday Night Live and in news radio where I did the same thing. I was just like, he nailed that. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, um, I, one of my, and please, please go ahead. Uh, well, I, I was, I was just watching the other day, the, um, Matt Foley motivational speaker sketch, yeah. which is completely, he's completely overshadowed by Chris Farley, who's, who was brilliant and, and hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but he, Phil Hartman has one of my favorite lines in that sketch where he's talking about, uh, you know, I, we're just worried that pot is going to lead to other things, you know, uh, crack, ice, boom, pow. You know, he's using like the. <laughs> also, he's the only one that doesn't come doesn't, close to laughing. Yeah, it doesn't break. Yeah. He's the, he doesn't break. I've never seen him break in a sketch. Uh, well, um, once he does. Oh. Uh, in the. Frankenstein sketch. Mm. Oh shit! I can't remember what the conceit of the sketch was, but he does once, and I think that's okay. it. Yeah, that that's it though. Um, he was also in a, a movie, Small Soldiers or Tiny Soldiers. Oh, his, uh, it's about these uh, these toys that are like supposed to be toys, oh, but then like they're hacked that. into or something like that. It's been a long time since I've seen it, yeah. but they basically they come to life, and so these two different toys have to fight each other. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, Phil Hartman played the neighbor. And to this day they the funniest moment and as far as I can remember the only thing that I found funny in the film uh was Phil Hartman. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's been a long time, so maybe it's amazing. But um there's deleted scenes where it's all the different outtakes that Phil Hartman did. Oh, okay. And and he had this line that to me was absolutely hilarious. I don't know why I believe I was the only one, but it's him watching war movies and talking about how much he likes them. And he and he's just sort of going, and a good war movie does this. But I think my favorite war was the Vietnam War. <laughs> 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 and with that, with his voice right. and, and oh. delivery, it's so funny. God. And then there's the sassy sketch that he did. I, I don't know if you ever. That's fantastic. There's a point in news radio where he's trying to give up smoking. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I do. And and one of the characters comes in and Dave Foley's trying to give him coffee. Yep. 
And so they both just start screaming at the character to get out. <laughs> and Phil Hartman has such a booming, uh-huh. commanding presence and voice. And he's like, get the hell out! And his voice is so powerful that it's absolutely hilarious. God, he's brilliant, man. I, I just watched uh, House Guest with him in Sinbad. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah, weird one. I haven't one. seen that since I was like nine. Yeah, don't. Not not worth it. Yeah, you're you're good. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's very funny. And, and I love Sinbad, too. I think Sinbad's very funny. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it could have been. It was just one of those. One of the weird things about it is, uh, you know, Sinbad is is staying with these people they think that he's phil hartman's half brother and uh uh they eat uh they only eat like soy milk and vegetables and so he keeps trying to go to mcdonald's um but he doesn't have any money but he keeps trying to go back and it's the same issue every time and i don't understand why he like he still doesn't have any money like it's it's really (laughs) weird man that's a weird movie the i um there, there are brands of comedians like Sinbad, mm-hmm. um, and Brian Regan is another example of it yeah. too. Where I go, like, yeah, they're really good. I have no, I don't want to watch their specials. I really? get that they're really good. I don't find them funny though. Like, I don't laugh. You don't find Brian Regan like I, funny? I don't. I, I found his very first special ever uh-huh. funny when I was younger. Really? Even if I watch it now, and if I watch any of his newer stuff, and I get that he's talented. Like, I watch it and I go, like, yeah, this is a good game. Yeah. He's good writing. Uh, Sinbad, same thing, too. Family-friendly comedy just doesn't click with me. That is so It needs to have an edge and a darkness, or else I just can't, I can't get into oh. it. One of the best uh, live stand-up shows I ever saw was Brian Regan at Cobbs. He did a club day I, there. I believe it. Yeah, man, I mean, like comics that I like talk about how much they're yeah. influenced or, or impressed by Brian Regan. Uh-huh. And I, I am also impressed by him. He's a good comic. Yeah. I feel like any time I say that like, I don't find someone funny, it sounds like I'm saying they're not funny. No, no. And that's no, not no. the case. No, no, no. I, yeah, I don't. A, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I Sinbad. I don't. I don't find his stand-up funny. He was hilarious in "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia." So good, and yeah. it, and it's because suddenly there's an edge to him. You and Sinbad's like, like, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's cursing yeah. and he's threatening violence, mm-hmm. and now I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, okay. like that's what takes. And it's just I have a dark sense of humor, and so like no matter how good something is, yeah. it, you know, I think that's part of the reason why I like Pixar and Disney films. They're the, like the one exception. Yeah. Like, I can laugh at those films, and they don't have to be dark. <laughs> Dude, I just watched uh, Ratatouille last night. That is great. That's oh, great. It's oh, great. So great. Love it. Uh, um, yeah. I, I used to try, and I think it might be, like, like if you live through some rough stuff, like, if you don't have, uh, like, a nice upbringing, mm-hmm. I've no, or, or if you have a job that involves a lot of dark things, like, sure. if you're... Uh, a veterinarian or a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, you develop a darkness in your humor. We, it's a way of coping. We've talked about that before. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's true. And, and you have to. Yeah. You know, and that's what you find funny because that's what you relate and, to. <laughs> when I tried to relate this to people, the, the example I sometimes give is like, like if someone tried to tell me like a joke and, yeah. and it would be like, like for example, like, um, uh, what do you call a fish with no eyes? I don't know. Fish. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> and then I, I would kind of stare and go like, I don't. Oh, because you heard a fish. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. You brutally heard an innocent being. I got for at first I thought it was based on the spelling and that was stupid. Yeah. But like now I get it. That's pretty good. <laughs> like, and it's not a choice. Yeah. I don't like, yeah. like parade this like it's some like great quality I have. Yeah. I actually feel like a little a little bad about it at times. Um, I'm trying to get over feeling bad about it. Yeah, I think at this point, my I, I mean, like a lot of people make you feel bad if you laugh at dark things. Like then you're saying that those things don't matter, even though that's not what you're saying. That's not not at all. Uh, you're giving more value to those things. I think uh, in many ways. Yeah, there's a uh, my my mom came and saw. Um, this play that I wrote, uh, I don't know, it was about five, I don't know, about 10 years ago. And um, she said uh, afterwards, uh, she went, that was great. You were awful. Just me, my character, and just like the, it was a very dark, you know, it was yeah, black yeah. comedy. 
and uh, it, the, that was so funny to me that you were just awful. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, that's funny. And and she said to me one time, she said, uh, you know, I think the things that you think are funny, most people think are just sad. <laughs> 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 that kind of reminded me of um, I was in a class and it was some sort of like I can't even tell you what the class was like it didn't really make any sense it was sort of this like weirdly like humanities class in high school like uh-huh. it didn't really have any it was like how to how to be uh, a human not terrible yeah I don't know what the class was like a critical but, thinking yeah, class it, or something yeah maybe yeah. It, it almost seemed like a like a like psychology class but like like you were the subject it was weird huh. but uh we had to keep a journal and at one point she's like you can write whatever you want just as long as you're writing you can write about your day you can write a story yeah um you can do whatever so i wrote a story and my story was about uh this guy who has to go and cover up and find sort of like the x-files except he knows that it's an alien but he has to go cover it up and oh, like okay. that's his job. Gotcha. So in the scenario, it's about this kid who has mental abilities, and he doesn't know he has mental abilities. And it's like Carrie. Uh-huh. I think I, I was a big fan of Carrie growing up. Sure. And so he has to go cover up this kid who has mental abilities and who just kills everyone in his school using his mental abilities, like Carrie. Sure. So it builds up to that. And so uh, at the end of the day, we have to we have to turn him in towards the end of the semester and she was like you know i just started your story i would love to finish it because i'm just i want to know what happens and i was like oh that's such a nice compliment yeah. to hear in in middle school yeah. like i was like yeah it's great and then i forgot the kid kills a teacher oh. like in this really brutal fashion right. and so like later when i go to pick it up she hands it to me like it was a dead rat she's <laughs> like here is your story she was so terrified to be fair though james <laughs> I mean, it could have been his karate class. <laughs> you know, it was a science his, class. I think his, in the book, so his, it wasn't this class. It was a male, yeah, teacher, not a female. If I remember, his Boy Scout troop. I mean, anything <laughs> else <laughs> would have gotten the same uh, idea across. <laughs> uh, I felt, I felt so. Right. Like, I felt bad, but I was also laughing. Yes, of course, you yeah. Know, like, I felt bad for scaring her and for this, this like. What 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 she must have thought of me to be that uncomfortable? But <laughs> just, back to just like, how I plum forgot, <laughs> and it didn't occur to me at all. Like it's your manifesto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what kids with mental ability should be doing. <laughs> These things I believe by James Cody. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> You know, and that I think also comes from the fact that I was exposed to horror films, yeah, and uh, and things like Kids in the Hall at a really young age. I was watching Kids in the Hall when I was like nine. Yeah, same here. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I came across it because I my parents loved Saturday Night Live, and they always like yeah. let me watch Saturday Night Live. And um, I came across Kids in the Hall because on Comedy Central they they played it all the time. And, yeah. Um, I thought late at night, late at night. And I mm-hmm. thought that it was called Lorne Michaels presents. And I knew who Lorne Michaels was. And so for like a long time, I thought, Oh, this is this funny show called Lorne Michaels presents. Cause it, in the opening sequence, they don't, it doesn't say the kids in the hall or maybe I missed it or, or what. Happened. It says at the very end. And I think it says in the, if I remember correctly in the shadows. Like, gotcha. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think you're right. So I yeah. just, I just missed that. So for the longest time I was like, I love this show. Lorne Michaels presents. And uh, uh, then later on found out it was called Kids in the Hall, but it was so different than anything I'd seen. It was different than Saturday Night Live. It wasn't, you know, uh, it was like, like we we're talking oh, about, it was darker. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Apples and oranges. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And, and it was, it was that uh, they would play that. And then strangers with candy. And, and those were like, that was the holy oh, you know, yeah. duo oh, yeah. to me, man. That was the funniest shit I'd ever seen. Just because those were two very dark, weird things that were things I never, I'd never seen before. Mm. You know, I remember it was a sort of a bonding thing. I my my sister's boyfriend, who's now her husband, uh, was like sort of a father figure to me, and he loved Kids in the Hall, so we used to watch it together. We'd like right. eat pizza and, oh, and watch Kids in the Hall, and so like part of it was this this positive association yeah. of like having this 
older adult friend and watching this cool show that no one knows about. Yeah. You know, I, I remember Matt Stone and Trey Parker talking about uh, Monty Python mm-hmm. as being this thing that they knew about and it made them feel superior to the other kids yeah. because no one knew. And that's sort of how I felt about Kids in the Hall. Same here. Same here. Uh, I remember friends of mine, uh, a mutual friend of mine, Terrence, didn't like it. Yeah, wow. Well, because he's wrong. Because he's wrong. wrong. Yeah. He doesn't like good things. Yeah, he doesn't like things that bring people joy. <laughs> he so he only listens to experimental rock. He doesn't, he doesn't listen to this, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was one of the, the, like, even later on, like, how I met friends shit. I mean, how I met you and our, our, our mutual friend Clark, you know, is, is uh, you guys both love the kids in the hall. You guys both had uh, a sketch show, which I thought was so fucking cool. Uh, and uh, oh, that thing with the, the spaceman. Yeah, we it, uh, you couldn't really call it a sketch show. We performed once. Yeah, but I, it was really good enough for me. Times. It was better than anything I've ever it, seen. Yeah. yeah, and it did very badly that one time. I don't know. I, I was there. I liked it. Okay, man. <laughs> uh, to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the spaceman. That's, that's a pretty good man. one. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good name. Good for name. A sketch trip. Good name. There was a, a weird, uh, weirdly enough, one of the only sketches I can remember was Clark and Doug. Uh, had a sketch about uh, the North Star disappearing. Does that ring a bell at all? Not really. Well, anyway. Definitely could be a thing, though. I think it was, yeah. I remember there was one about this guy trying to pee in someone's front room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, they, dude, you can't pee there. And he's like, no, dude, it's cool. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was basically the whole sketch. Yeah. Uh, that was one I wrote. And I think that's the only reason I remember that one because it did not do well when I wrote it. Um, and then I remember the one that Doug wrote with a different friend of his that we ended up performing, which is a great sketch about this guy bursting into a house to rob him and he's so he's holding a gun at him and he says i'm gonna kill you so much i remember that and he starts correcting his grammar it's like you can't kill someone so much and they go back and forth on that i think that and and i may be wrong but i think that you that was when we recorded your first stand-up yes yes you opened with your hour (laughs) yeah yeah, I think I may. Have yeah, been. yeah, I think that was like the the fifth to tenth time or something like that I was ever on stage, and I recorded an hour of of what one might call comedy. I, yeah, I call that. Yeah. I will. I will. I will. Uh, this is the most I'll give it. Sure. For what it was for doing it so little, mm-hmm. that's pretty damn good. It was. I'll give it that yeah. for for how. Now, how stupid it was to think that I could record an album yeah. that soon and so much of it could be new uh, material that has never been said. You know, like that element's kind of dumb. But isn't, but. That, isn't that funny, though, because I was so impressed by that and I, I thought it was great. But because you're so close to it, you're just like, oh, God, there, there was there were things there are things on that album that I still remember. And this was. I mean, you know, I was 18, something like that, mm. and, you know, and I'm I'm a I'm a certain age now. You know, uh th- that's so interesting that yeah, yeah, you're close to it and you don't you, of course you don't think anything of it, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you also if you if you become uh really interested in an art form and you stick with it, you get better yeah. and it becomes very painful to look at what you thought was good. Yeah. You know, that's that's almost like the artist curse is that you all by the time you finish anything, you've gotten better than the thing you started. And, that was one and of the so like, yeah, that, that was one of the things that always I felt doing music. One of the one, few times that I put something out on an actual label, by the time the album came out, I was just like, I, I'm, I've moved on. I don't yeah. care about this. Like, I could never like promote mm-hmm. anything. So I was like, oh, this is terrible. I've already I'm doing I'm on some new shit now. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's and then you know what flaws were there that mm-hmm. you've worked on since then. You know more about the craft itself and what makes something uh, like what what crutches you're using that you didn't even realize you were using crutches. Uh, yeah, it becomes very difficult to look at old work. Uh, and speaking of that, I, I don't know if, if if we actually ended up going back to it, but why why did Dave Foley not end up? directing the wrong guy he was just uh busy with oh, right. uh, okay. news radio that's right yeah. we did okay um news radio is doing very well he was making good money he did news radio he made the wrong guy and he was in a bug's life all at the same time yeah, that's and right. then news radio ended 
and subsequently, according to him, this is this is how he describes it. Everything dried up. Like he was just like doing incredibly well. He does not have a ton of money for how successful he was, mm-hmm. uh, largely because of a divorce. Yes, we- um, and insane laws in Canada. Yeah, you do, you know that that whole story about him is is yeah. crazy, just crazy. Um, um, I suggest you look it up yeah, to give you some of the bullet points. Yeah. Canada has insane laws when it comes to uh, uh, alimony mm-hmm. and divorce. So Dave Foley was doing; he got the divorce when he was making a lot of money, and they took like what would probably still be considered like a lot for what he was making. Like people would probably still be like, "Hey, that seems." excessive and then he was no longer making that money and they didn't bother lowering that amount right. they just kept it at that amount and uh the the judge said uh insane things that dave Foley talks about one of which was in order to not pay that amount or even to not pay he would have to have a viable reason why he could not, and death was not a viable reason. Like that was actually oh stated God. that it would not be a good enough reason to not pay if he were dead. Jesus, which led you know uh, Dave Foley saying like, which means that if he died, he would have to continue performing. Right, <laughs> like the, his corpse would have to be dragged. Along some sort of in in the hall we, reunion. Some sort of weekend at Bernie's situation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the things I had heard is uh, heard him say is uh, that his obligation to pay had nothing to do with his ability to pay. Yeah, oh. yeah, something bizarre like that. It was wild, insane. And you know, and it seems like he had to pay well past when his children were adults. Yeah, which is also weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, interesting uh, because for someone yeah. so talented, you think he'd be. And he does um, work still, and you know that's one. I, mm. I know that's one of the reasons he started doing stand up was to, to make some money. Uh, yeah, and he's a, a quite quite a good stand up. I, I I like his, mm-hmm. his stand up quite a bit. Um, his stuff is is very like here's an incredibly talented comedic actor. Yeah. who's just starting in stand up. So yeah. there's some unpolished stuff and some rough, and like he could be better here and there. But he's still such a good. He knows comedy so well. He doesn't know stand up well, yeah. but he knows comedy so well that it it, it's, it makes for a really neat special, like a very bizarre yeah. sort of pacing and feel to it. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, also I just love when people honestly discuss what it's like to be a, a celebrity of of any kind. Mm-hmm. You don't get that very often. When people become famous, they almost they they recoil from talking about fame. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because it's alienating to people or because there's so many awful things about it that they don't really want to bring it up. I don't know exactly why, but like when Dave Foley talks about meeting Uma Thurman yeah. and how it was because of the show and stuff like that, it's like, yeah, that, that stuff happens. Or, or um, yeah, you, you just don't hear it very often. I think that's unfortunate because it is an interesting uh, fame is an interesting and weird thing right. in our culture, and I want to dissect it more from people who can actually say what it's say what it has done in their life and what it's like. And it, and it all depends on how you frame it, you know. Because I, I'm I'm gonna say I'm I'm not a huge fan of Aziz Ansari's stand up. I was uh, earlier uh, his his earlier stand up I thought was great, uh, but then later on when he's just telling stories about meeting Kanye, I'm not. I'm not very interested in that, you know, um, but I am interested in kind of the, like you were saying, the the pitfalls and the the uh, how your life changes, yeah, as, yeah. as opposed to, um, let me tell you this crazy story about this guy I know, yeah, that you also know, Wait. and uh, it's possible too that 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 the reason that it's not brought up much is because your life doesn't change that much or doesn't seem to. I know. Yeah. Uh, Steve Martin said that one of the only things that he liked about fame is that it made it easier to socialize in parties because yeah. he had an icebreaker right? and people wanted to hear what he had to say. And he said, other than that, there wasn't a huge difference. I remember Bill Murray talking about once that like you would think that fame would make it easier to uh, talk to girls, but they treat you like this weird animal, yeah, like this thing that like not like a charming person, but this like relic 
Yeah. Um, and so like stuff like that, I find really fascinating Me too. because uh, I think it says so much about who we are as people and how we, as, how we communicate and, and, and stuff like that. Well, um, Bill Murray, I feel like, uh, Bill Murray said, you know, that if you can choose between being rich and famous and just rich, just be rich. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That would, that would be my choice. Yeah. 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 Also, that's another thing that I feel isn't discussed a lot is how much your life changes with money. Yeah. Um, because, uh, studies, you know, studies can be misleading, but studies show that, uh, money totally does buy happiness. Yeah. This, this, this idea that you can be perfectly content and poor and it's just a mindset is, is dumb. Yeah. Now it only does it up to a certain point. I think it's 70, like once you get, I think it's $79,000 a year. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I thought it was a little more, but it, it might, might be, be. Uh, yeah, yeah, it might be that way. And, uh, like, yeah, once you get above that. It, there's no real change, yeah. but to have your needs met and to alleviate stress and worry yeah. is huge. Right. And it's not really discussed much. Right. Um, there's a great, uh, Jim, Jim Carrey, uh, has said, and, and I, I just, I love this. I find it so fascinating. He says, I, I wish that everyone could get everything they ever wanted in life. So that way they could realize it doesn't make them happy. I um, find that so interesting. And again, that's, True and not true. Mm. You know, uh, someone who's poor, who's struggling, who has kids, who's worried, who's stressed, who do- not sure they're going to make rent. Uh, suddenly, if they have money, their life's better, plain and simple. Mm. It's better. Uh, if they have all the money in the world, no, their life isn't any better than if they just had that, you know, it may be 79000 Right. But, but if you are poor, it sucks being poor. There is no, like... <laughs> Yeah. Like, well, as long as you put on some rose tinted glasses, you should be fine. No, it sucks. It sucks. Yeah. It's- yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can't afford to see the doctor, but I just won't worry about it. No, it sucks <laughs> that you're in like probably physical pain that you don't need to be in because you can't afford to see a doctor. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Oops. Uh,. And yeah, it sucks that Dave Foley uh, could be a millionaire, yeah. and instead is just doing well. Yeah, yeah, but he's still doing well. Yeah, yeah. it's still not that bad. <laughs> I'd imagine. I think. I think. I think Dave Foley more than likely is in that scenario where he looks at the the work of the people he worked with, the other kids in the hall. He had the most successful career and has the least amount of money out of all of them. Yeah, isn't that interesting? He really has had the most. Uh, I guess he'd, he'd be the most well-known out of all of them. I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Mark McKinney was on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Uh, briefly. He's, he's very fun. They're all so funny. And so, oh, they're all fantastic. So yeah. talented. But, yeah, that's interesting. I wonder why that is uh, that, he, that he ended up kind of having uh, more, my theory, more of a career. My theory would be that he, he can kind of embody the everyman. Yeah. Which is why he did the voice on A Bug's Life. Yeah. Um, yeah, he... he had had more of the everyman thing than I guess any of them. Uh, I guess, uh, yeah. He uh, he he had a. He's very good at the straight man, mm-hmm. and he could play those straight roles m- yeah. much more so than like uh, Scott Thompson can. I think Scott Thompson would be the the second most famous, even though he hasn't really been in a whole lot. But you know, mm-hmm. you, you know who he is. He's on the Larry Sanders show oh, for a while. He's great on that. Um, and and you know he he his buddy Cole character was used in the Daily Show I think at one point. Oh like, yeah, that's right. He went yeah. to Russia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> went to Russia. I think he also covered like the Republican National Convention once or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I buddy love, Cole's fantastic. I love I, that. Scott character. Thompson's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's fantastic. I mean they they. Uh... Okay, I'm going to tell a story. Please, yeah. And I'm not not proud of this. Okay. Uh, but it kind of goes into celebrity culture in a way. So I went and saw Kids in the Hall uh, a few times. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I was like, I just want to like be part of this show in some way. And so I could have yelled out. And I felt that was rude. Yeah. And so I just started staring at Scott Thompson. <laughs> and just like really intently staring at him until he noticed and he got visibly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt so bad. <laughs> To this day, I'm still just like, what the fuck was I doing? Like, that's so rude. And He's weird. Like, probably like, like, and weird. 
<laughs> like I just wanted to be like like I'm such a huge fan of that show and I wanted to be like like in some way part like I went and stole a prop off of the stage. What did you after take? They left. Just a balloon that they popped for the party maker sketch. That's amazing. Um and like again, this, again like I think I was probably understating how much of a fan of Kids of the Hall I was yeah. growing up. But uh and so like I just, I felt so bad cuz I'm wondering I'm like did he think that he had like some stalker <laughs> yeah. Like I was gonna end up at his hotel room going like I saw that we had a connection. Like Was he whisked away? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That was so dumb. Wow. Uh you know, I think I think it's similar to like 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 it was it was d- dumber and creepier. But uh it's similar to like when someone like runs up and like starts having a conversation with a celebrity they like that the, the celebrity obviously doesn't want to have. Right. You know, and they're just like, oh, and I loved you in this. Oh, that's great. You know, I'm glad you're a fan. And then, like, this one time, my cousin came over, and we were talking about it, and they're just like, oh, God. Ne- I'm never going to get out of this. <laughs> I always feel bad. Like, like celebrities have to be dicks sometimes. Yeah. I mean, they just have to be. Right. Like, how else are you going to get out of that? Yeah. People are assholes. I was- Dave Chappelle told a story about being on the plane. I don't know if you ever heard this, and some and they know that Dave Chappelle he was in like coach because he was having like money trouble. Sure, uh, um, and he talks about this guy just kind of they're like start you know trying to have pictures with him, and this guy goes like, "Come here, come here," to Dave Chappelle, and Dave Chappelle's like says something around the lines of I can't remember verbatim, but like you need to sh- stop that shit right now, yeah. or I will punch you in the face. Like like they're really aggressive. He's like because when you're a celebrity in a uh, crowd like that it's like prison if you let one person walk on you yeah. that is it you are everyone's bitch for the rest of that flight yeah and i'm like that i there's no part of my mind that doesn't believe that right it was uh really interesting one of the mo- more uh interesting th- things i ever saw was i went and saw uh dana gould one of my favorite mm-hmm. comics uh and oh he's great yeah fantastic so funny and mm-hmm. uh David Koechner was opening for him from uh, Anchorman movies and and uh, yeah. and he I was outside this is back when I smoked I was outside of Cobb's smoking a cigarette and Dana Gould and David Koechner were walking up to the club and someone stopped them and they were just gushing at David Koechner just oh god I just and Dana Gould watching him just kind of like stand there who to me I love Dave Koechner but Dana Gould is a legend to me, you know, and he was just kind of standing there like nodding politely. And, you know, he was the headliner that night. You know, it was, it was really interesting to see, but because Dave Koechner was in this movie, he was an anchor man, you know, at, at, yeah. at, at, he was, people were, this guy was obsessed with Dave Koechner and, um, n- you know, not, not saying anything about him. He was great, but, but yeah. to me, Dana Gould's a legend, man. Yeah, that's who you should be gushing at. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting out once, and I uh, uh, did a show, and this comic who had been on the Tonight Show and had like a real career had had done the show just to get some stage time and to work on like a Tonight Show set. And he was like, you know, and I was like, oh, it's neat, you know, like we both performed, and this guy comes out afterwards, and he starts pointing at me. He's like, you were amazing, man. You got a career. Like you were, you were so good. And like to the other guys, like. And you keep working. Oh. Like, <laughs> oh. It's just one obnoxious to just do that in general. You but keep to also working. be so wrong about the trajectory of our career. My, uh, <laughs> my dad came and saw me do stand up one time. I may have talked about this, but uh, I, I asked him afterwards. I was like, "Did what did you think of the show? Which, of course, I was terrible. I'm not, I was never a good stand up. <laughs> but, uh, but he said, <laughs> it's one of my favorite quotes. He goes, he goes, man, that guy that that opened or, or the guy that closed or whatever. He goes, now, now they were funny. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the the type of humor you went for uh-huh. is really difficult to pull off on stage. Yeah, yeah. You did this very self effacing like one liners, uh-huh. and then you dismiss them right after I know. telling yeah. the jokes. I said and. Yeah, I'm not that good. That can work, but no, I'm, I'm not saying you weren't good. <laughs> is that you would have had to put in like ten more years? Easy, yeah. Of like of like stage time before you got good, and then you would have been like this really cool comic that people would have sought out because that's a hard like mm-hmm. kind of thing to do. That's sort of like um, you know you would have 
not to say you would have been as good as, no, I but that's what Mitch Hedberg does. Yeah. Mitch Hedberg had that self-effacing, weird, clever one-liners and scenarios. Mm-hmm. That's a difficult road to go down. Totally. Totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I felt in many ways the comedy that I did was easier to uh, connect with a crowd. Mm-hmm than a lot of the the sort of one-liner stuff. Uh, it was difficult in the sense that I talked about, uh, you know, controversial stuff and sure. it's dark. Sure. But the fact that it's very conversational is a much easier style. Mm-hmm. It was very, uh, like, Pat Oswalt does that. Mar- Mark Maron does that. Uh, uh, it was, yeah, it was very, yeah. very similar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, confessional sometimes referred to yeah, yeah, certain yeah. elements of it where you're just like here who, here's who I am mm-hmm. you know here's all the weird shit about me and my yeah. thoughts and and then I project it onto the world yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, well you know e- either way uh, the, the wrong guy you, you have if you haven't seen this movie it is uh, uh, fantastic it's so funny. Uh, you will, you will. I can guarantee you're going to laugh out loud watching this movie because it has so many moments that catch you off guard, and uh, and just the the kind of visual uh, gags are just fucking amazing, man. And again, I have shown this movie to so many people because yeah. I feel like it's it's one of those ones that a lot of people haven't seen. I've never had anyone not enjoy it. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, it's hilarious. Dave Foley is a comic genius, yes. and he's at top of his game in this. And it's completely overrated. One hundred percent overrated. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, uh, join us next week, and uh, we will uh, we'll be back uh, doing the damn thing. Uh, until then, uh, follow us on Facebook. Yep. Look us up on uh, the internet. Yep. Uh, maybe we'll start one of them uh, one of them Twitters. Oh yeah, we should do that. Maybe uh, maybe one of them uh, Instagrams. We might have them by the time this airs. <laughs> yeah, someone you know? someone should get Look on up. that. Google it. <laughs> All right. Until then, I'm Michael J. Hunter. O'Connor, James Flutie, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>